I'm Joe McPhee, and this is the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame inductee profiles, and my guest is Pat Andrews. Welcome, Pat. Thank you very much. Pat Andrews was born 1939 in Miami, Manitoba. He usually pitched or played third base as a ball player, and he helped Miami to five provincial titles from 1952 to 1956 at different age groups. He played senior baseball from 1958 through 1962 and then from 1971 to 1980. He played fastball in Pine Falls in, in the intervening years. In senior baseball, he was with Miami, Selkirk, Kiwaiton, Vince Carth, Fort White, Precious Blood, Nipawa, and Carmen. He was the most valuable player of the Manitoba Senior Baseball League's 1974 playoffs for the Nipawa Cubs. He was also part of Team Canada at the 1972 World Championships in Nicaragua. Pat also excelled in hockey as he was part of the 1959 Memorial Cup champion Winnipeg Braves. Tell me, Pat, about uh, starting out your baseball career in Miami. Well, I was quite fortunate, actually. Uh, the group ahead of me, two years older, of which Jack Callum was one, Max Weber and so forth, they were very involved in baseball. I was interested, so I decided I was going to play ball. And I was the youngest one, but I learned quite a bit at that particular time. Good. And uh, what were these five provincial championships? How did that work? Well, actually, I started playing juvenile ball when I was, what, 13 years old. So each year we would play likely midget and juvenile. So we ended up doing fairly well, except our problem always ended up at Miami. We always ended up playing Hamiota. And Hamiota had that, at that time had uh, Glennis Scott and the Seafoots were there. So it was quite a competitive league. And they usually ended up beating us, unfortunately. And at that time you had a rural champion then you had a city rural championship at the same time right so mm -hmm. okay so you often played in in a higher age category than in your age obviously all the time okay actually i was playing third base regularly when i was 13 with the miami intermediates because the third baseman for the juvenile team uh was perhaps better but didn't want to play senior mm-hmm now, you, your career took you to quite a few different <laughs> stops in Manitoba. <laughs> you were the real first, one of the original mercenary players, I think, by the sounds of it. Well, when you grow up in Miami, there's all of them are farmers, so frequently they were busy on the weekends and didn't want to go to tournaments. So what I would often do is know that there was a tournament in Somerset or uh, Notre Dame. I would go walk around, look at the teams, see who had the easiest end of the draw, and then make a deal with them that I would play for nothing except a split of the winnings. So that's the way I earned my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh -huh. So how did you uh, end up in Nippon? Actually, uh, I was teaching physical education in Pine Falls, and it was a very small school. Uh, extremely difficult to get enough players for a team and the opportunity to come to Nipua came up I applied and Ivan was the principal at that particular time in his stupidity he brought me here okay great the and first year I came I came on pretty well July the first I moved into town and as I backed up to the door of the house that we were renting, uh, I saw a guy walk by with his ball glove and a uniform on. So rather than unpack, I found my glove and spikes and walked down to the ball diamond and told him I want to play. And, of course, I knew absolutely no one. Donnie Martin at that time came over, and he'd played junior hockey in Winnipeg, so I knew a bit about him. So I ended up walking onto the field just saying, I want to play. So finally, they gave me a chance to play. <laughs> great. What year was that that you moved to Nipua? 1972. Okay. Great. And that was, uh, then you became a member of the Nipua Cubs, I guess. That 
was the first part. And I found out they were an excellent group of guys, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, a good ball team. Uh, they would not allow me to play in 1972. Ben Scarth won the league that year, but they wouldn't let me play because I had not signed a card early enough. Mm -hmm. So I played exhibition games with the Cubs that year. The next year is when we won the Intermediate Championship in 73. Okay. That was for the province? That was for the province. Then in 74 was when... Jerry McKay talked me into going to Nicaragua. All right. Good. And tell us about that experience. That was an experience in itself. I can remember playing Angusville, I believe it was. We were playing them in Hamiota in the playoff game for the provincial championship. And Jerry McKay is sitting up there. And some smart aleck said, well... He's likely scouting for Team Canada, and of course we all had a good laugh about that. A few days later, I got a phone call from Jerry asking me if I'd be interested in going. Now, that's quite an opportunity, so I talked to Ivan and Cecil Cox, and with their support, got to be able to go. Great. And did you get to play regularly? I played more <clears throat> than I should have, actually. It was a good ball team. When we were we left early in November and spent a week in Homestead, Florida. During practice, I was charging from third base to on a slow roller and sprained my ankle. So that was a bit of a handicap. So frequently, my role in Nicaragua was pinch hitting and so forth. Okay. And now, when you joined the Cubs, they. Uh immediately felt that uh, with you in their lineup, they were good enough to enter the Manitoba Senior Baseball League. Uh, I'm not sure whether that was the starting point. The Nipah Cubs were a good ball team before I ever got there. They had some good ball players that were nearing their end of, end of their career. And unfortunately, I think they entered the Senior League too late. Okay. And when we did go into it, uh, we had a strong ball team, all local players, and uh, did extremely well. Good. In fact, uh, 74 was the first year that the Cubs entered the league. That's right. And you made a real run for the championship. Well, we sort of ran out of gas. In Now, I'm trying to think whether it was the se uh, seventh or eighth game. One game ended up tied. So then we had to play an extra game, and that's when Riverside beat us in that extra game. Okay, and that was for the title. That was for the title. Okay, good. Now, uh, you have a, you did some pitching for the Cubs then? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, with Norm Hempstead was your catcher, I believe. That's right. You? Okay. Now, one of the, I know that you were a power hitter and a hit for a high average, because uh, I did check the stats out, but one of the, the interesting statistics that I found about you in the 1975 season was that you struck out once in 59 at bats. No, well, well that was something. a bad day. I must have had something <laughs> in my eye. Uh, usually, I was a first ball hitter. So the first pitch, I would usually swing for the fence. The second pitch, I would go for the single. And the third pitch was to get the bat on the ball. So not striking out was not a major accomplishment. On my third strike, I never hit it too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you didn't walk very often. No, either. that's right. So it was interesting because I know that Norm, the year before, had struck out only once in 88 at bats. That's so right. I wondered whether you two were in competition. <laughs> well, we worked hard at it. Yeah. Uh, Norm was uh, very, very competitive and an excellent team member. Uh, really added a great deal of life to the ball team. Okay. And, of course, you took a few turns on the mound, and what, what type of pitcher were you? I wasn't really a pitcher. I was a thrower. Okay. I had a reasonably good arm, uh, could throw the ball fairly hard, not a bad curveball, but a change-up was non-existent. As I like to tell everybody, I just threw it and ducked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Now, you're... you're 
I have a baseball there. What's the difference grip between a fastball and a curveball? Did you have a difference? Well, my hand is so small that I have trouble grabbing a hold of a baseball. So in order to throw that fastball, I just use the two-seam approach. Mm -hmm. When I went to the curveball or slider, I went this way, okay. down the side. Mm -hmm. My change-up, my fingers were not big enough to be able to throw it, so... I just threw it harder and harder and harder. That's all I did. Right. Control yeah. was quite good, so mm -hmm. I didn't walk that many. But I need to get infield behind me. But it was sort of discouraging when the outfielders were fighting with the catcher to get the mitt and the belly pad and everything so they'd be protected in the outfield. <laughs> so uh, you had quite a... a fastball career too I guess in Pine Falls that was a popular sport there was rather than baseball that's right mm -hmm. okay and that uh, is an excellent game it does not get the publicity that it should uh, unfortunately fastball has sort of died off a bit and slow pitch has taken over but fastball is a quick game mm -hmm. and if you're going to hit a good fastball pitcher You've got to be on your toes. You don't have much time to think. Right, right. Uh, did you give up your hockey career after the junior experience? Uh, no. <clears throat> I actually played, well, maybe too long, according to my wife, <laughs> after I finished junior. Uh, I continued to play with Pine Falls, and we ended up winning quite a number of provincial championships. Then I, when I moved to Nipua, I played with the natives. When I went to Carmen, I played with the beavers. I'm getting mm -hmm. near the end of my career by that time. Mm -hmm. And in Carmen, we started the Pemina Valley Old Timers, so we continued to play all the way through. Okay. Good. And uh, I guess originally you started out, say, going from tournament to tournament. Uh, those were great days. Like, compared to now when tournaments are sort of a dead issue also. When you went to a tournament, the crowds were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't find a place to stand almost all the way around the ball field. Uh, people knew their baseball, appreciated good baseball, and really went to the games. Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. The following was great back in the early 50s or late 50s, early 60s, it was yeah. a hotbed. Every small town had a really good ball team. When the Hall of Fame is looking for ball players, there's a tremendous number of ball players that played for a few years, then quit and took up their family responsibilities. Oh, there is a lot of, every town had good ball players. Right. Good. Okay. So, uh, well, it's uh, been great talking to you, and thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, and thank the Hall of Fame for the recognition that I've received. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. This has been Joe McPhee with the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame inductee profiles. My guest has been Pat Andrews.